Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 22.1 in the Python tutorial series. Today we are going to do a little bit more with strings, but this this might be one of my favorite topics involving strings and what this is is, is going to be string method. Now there are a lot of different string methods that are available in Python. Things that can take a string and make it all up, uppercase, all lowercase, can capitalize words, can find it, words located within a string can remove white space. There's all kinds of great string methods that you can use and they all have some sort of different application particularly when you start learning Python and make a lot of text adventure games. I think there's in the vicinity of maybe 10 or 12 different methods we'll look at so there's going to be a lot of content in the upcoming probably two lessons. But once you've had a chance to use string methods, I think you'll find they make your programs so much better. So I'm excited to get started with lesson 22.1, string methods. So here we are. You can see I have a new Python shell open. Most of this lesson will probably be practicing using the methods themselves in the shell and kind of getting to know what different string methods are available because like I said earlier there really are a lot of them so I'll, I'll put them over on the right hand side of the screen so you can take a look at everything we're going to be doing but once you get used to using these in the shell you'll start to see how they can be used in your programs to give you some really powerful features that weren't available before in order to start I'm going to need a string so I'm going to create a string and I'm going to call it greeting so it's called greeting and it's going to be equal to the string, hello there, exclamation point, how are you today? So you've done things like this before, and now if you type in greeting, you can see we have the string there. Now the first, uh, the first function we're going to look at is the lower function. The lower function will take the string and return it as if everything was lower cases. So if I were to type greeting dot lower, see everything comes back lowercase this capital H was low was returned lowercase as well as this capital H in how now it's important to note that as we use these string methods we're not adjusting the original variable greeting is still equal to hello there how are you doing today with capital H's it's only greeting dot lower that has all lowercase letters if you want to save the return of one of these methods, you have to set it equal to a new variable. So what I might want to do is say lower greeting equals greeting dot lower. And by doing that, I've created a variable that has a completely lowercase greeting. So as we go through this, keep that in mind. As you use these methods, you're not actually changing the original variable. You're just changing what Python is returning at that particular time. Now similar to lower we have a dot upper method. If I were to type greeting dot upper I'm going to get all uppercase strings. So it took every letter and capitalized it. And just like in lower if I were to just type in greeting we can see there hasn't been a change to our original variable. Now another one, another method that is particularly useful is count. If I were to say, uh, not method, greeting.count and then provide an argument, let's say a lowercase e, this method will return a number and it will count the number of times the argument appears in the string. So in this case it's looking for a lowercase e and I can see there's one, two, three, and four, so it's going to return the number four. If I were to type in greeting.count and use an uppercase H, I can see there's two greeting.count, spell that right, greeting.count and use some punctuation, so say an exclamation point, I can see there's one. The count method will always return a number. Now, let's say we had a string and let's call this, you know, item. An item is going to be equal to the string computer. The, the fourth method that we're going to look at here is the capitalize method. 
if I were to say item dot capitalize, it will return the string capitalized. Keep in mind, this is only going to capitalize the first letter of a string. So if I typed in a complete name, so if I said name equals Mark Johnson. So I've got Mark Johnson and I did name dot capitalize. See, only the mark is capitalized because only the first letter is going to be capitalized when you use the capitalize method. There's some different ways that we can go through to capitalize every single letter or check to see if it's the first letter of a word. We haven't quite got there yet, so capitalize might have a little bit of a limited function for you right now, but it's definitely there. And this is useful when you prompt the user, say, to enter your adventurer's name. They'll type in a name, and it looks a little bit goofy in adventure games if the user types in a name that's in the all uppercase or all lowercase. So if I were to take the name and say, you know, what is the name of your adventurer? And they were to type in... Brutus, a warrior. Well, all of a sudden now, when I print that name in the rest of the text adventure, it looks a little bit different. But if I were to simply name dot capitalize, it'll take the name and capitalize it and make it look a little bit more normal. So that's one trick you can use in your text adventures to make sure that the users are inputting names that have the same look and feel as the rest of your adventure. Now another thing that happens commonly is white space will play an impact in your program. If I ask the user do they want to continue and I give them a prompt and they accidentally type space Y or space N, Python won't read that as just a Y or an N. They'll see it as a space and sometimes it can cause errors. So let's create a variable called space and I'm going to name this, uh, put a bunch of spaces in the front end. I um, use the quotation marks, so a bunch of spaces, and do I'm in space, and then a bunch of spaces followed by the quotation mark. So now this string has a bunch of leading spaces and a lot of spaces on the end. If I use lstrip, rstrip, or the strip method, I can get rid of those. So I could say space dot strip and the strip method takes all of the spaces up to the first character and eliminates them, and then all of the spaces after the last character and eliminates them, and just returns the string, I'm in space. Now I can also specify what side I want this done on, so I could say space dot L strip, which will only affect the left hand, oh, not L string, let's try that again, space dot L strip, and it will only remove the spaces from the front side of the string. If I were to do space dot r strip, it's kind of the same thing except it removes all the spaces only from the right side of the string. So in order to give you an example of the find method, um, I went ahead and threw up like a quick, a quick reference for indexing here. So we have a string there on the, the board. I'm, I'm running late could you order me a plate? And as you'll remember from string slicing and indexing, each one of those characters is going to have its own unique index location, in this case 0 through 44. Using the find command, we can return the index location of particular characters. So when we bring Python back up, we'll give you some examples of this, but to show you what's going on in the background, if I were to do uh, string.find and then provide the argument of a lowercase u, Python will go through the string one letter at a time until it finds a lowercase u. So it would say, no, 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 aha, we found a lowercase u right there. And so the find command, in this case, will return the number 5, or the integer 5. If I were to, say, find a lowercase n, it will return the integer 6. Now there are other cases of an n, you can see there's a in index location 7n as well. When you use the find command, it will only return the index of the first occurrence of the argument. So a find command would not be able to return a 7. It would return the 6. Now the, the, uh, wow, lost my tricycle of thought there. 
the find command doesn't need to take just a single letter as an argument. Let's say we were to do a find command on late. It would search and it would find the L here and then continue looking. So it would look for an L, A, T, and E, which it found, and then would return a single integer, the number 12. When you do a find command for an expression or a string that's longer than one character, when it's found, it will return the index location of the first letter of the word that you're looking for. So in this case, if we did a, a find command for late, we would get the number 12. Now you also have the rfind method, which will do the same thing, but will start searching at the right-hand side of the string and move left. If we did a dot find for late, we would return the number 12. But you can see there's another occurrence of late in the string, and that's over here in the word plate. If I were to take the string and run the rfind method, trying to find the string late, it would start looking from the right, and when it found the word late, it would return the index location of the first letter of that string, and an rfind command would give me a 40 instead of a 12. Similarly, if I did an rfind for n, it would start looking at the right, keep going back until it found the letter n, and in this case, it would get all the way here to the number 9 and return 9. So an rfind for the letter n would return a 9, and using find and rfind, there would be no way to get the 7 because there are ends that occur both to the left and right of it. So let's go back to our Python window and see how this works in practice. So I'm back here in my Python shell and let's go ahead and create a variable string and set it equal to what we just had in our uh, in our paint window. I'm running late. Could you order me a plate? And so now our string is equal to the str our string variable is equal to the string. I'm running late. Could you order me a plate? Now, when we use the find command, I could say string dot find the occurrence of the letter n, and I'm going to get the number six. From our earlier example, you could see that it's finding the index location of that letter n. If I were to say string dot r find n. It's going to return the number 9, and that's because it's finding that n right there. It's not going to be able to find this n in the middle. Similarly, if I were to say string.find late, I get the number 12, and that's because the index location of the first letter of the string that I was looking for late is at index location 12. If I were to say string.rfind late, I would get the index location 40 because that's the start of late. Now, find doesn't seem like it would have a lot of immediate uses, but it is one of the more useful string methods. And that's because we can search for something that's not there. If I were to do string.find and look for the letter x, there is no letter x in this string right here. Whenever the find command is unable to locate something in your string, it will return the number negative 1. So it's not going to give you an error. It's going to return the value of negative 1. When you couple this with an if, elif, else loop, it's really easy to go through and see if the user typed something. So if you told the user to, um, if you prompted the user, type what you want to do, and they said, look inside the treasure chest, and they typed that entire sentence out, you would have a string, look inside the treasure chest. And what you could do is a string dot find and maybe look for the word look. If it returns any value other than negative one, you know that the user typed in the word look. If it returns a negative one, you know that the user didn't type in the word look. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at how to apply that concept and allow the users in our text adventures to not simply use a menu, but to type in full commands and full sentences in trying to let us know what they want their character to do. 
One last thing to keep in mind is that you're not necessarily limited to running just one method. So let's go back to our item and set it equal to computer again since I opened a new window. We have the variable item set to computer. And so if I were to type item dot capitalize, we would get an uppercase computer. Now methods are always going to execute from left to right one at a time. If I were to say item dot capitalize dot lower, I would get an all lowercase computer. That's because the item would be changed to be capitalized, then be changed to be lower. I'm going to copy that right there and then put dot upper on it. And you can see I get an all upper uppercase computer. And that's because we start with the original item, it gets capitalized, then it gets assigned all lowercase letters, then it gets assigned all uppercase letters. This becomes really useful with, say, a strip command where let's um, create it, since that doesn't have spaces, let's create a new variable space and put a bunch of spaces computer, a bunch of spaces, there we go. So if I type space, I get computer. So if I were to do space dot capitalize, nothing happens. And that's because the capitalize command is only looking at that first index location. But if I were to type in space dot L strip dot capitalize, I'm getting an uppercase computer. Knowing that it executes from left to right is really important. If I were to type in space dot capitalize, capitalize dot L strip, I'm getting a lowercase computer. That's because this capitalize method occurs first, it's got nothing to capitalize, and then it strips the empty spaces. So knowing that your methods occur left to right can be important. You know, and then we might take space dot upper dot strip and be left with only an uppercase computer from this original string right here which had a lot of white space in it. Now that's not all the methods that we're going to look at as we uh, we're going to wrap up lesson 22.1 here and we're going to head on to lesson 22.2. Lesson 22.2 will uh, add starts with, ends with, is alpha and is numeric to your list of methods that you'll be able to use. And you'll find what I find to be a rather uh, enjoyable text adventure or rather enjoyable challenge program in Lesson 22.2. There is no challenge program for Lesson 22.1. Hopefully you learned something about using string methods and how you can apply them in your games. As we move on to Lesson 22.2, we'll find out how to apply these in some really neat ways. As always, if you have any questions about anything you saw here or you're having problems with any of your particular programs, let me know and I will be happy to help. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the Python tutorial series and I'll see you next time.